my views on math curriculum have changed dramatically over the years. When we first started homeschooling, I was fairly confident that a traditional spiral textbook method was right for my kids. After all, that's what I grew up with. That's what I knew. I understood it, or I sort of understood it. Um, <laughs> but as time went on, and as I homeschooled my kids for longer, I learned that what worked for me as a kid didn't always work best for my kids. My three oldest are all boys and they're all pretty gifted at math and I found myself having to switch gears a little bit as time went on. So today I want to talk about various math curriculums, some we have used, some we have not, but they're pretty popular. I wanna tell you what we've liked about them, what we didn't, what's worked and why it worked and hopefully try to help you find math curriculum that will work for your kids. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Turning on notifications helps us to keep making content. There's also a part one to this video, so make sure to check out the channel and learn more about choosing math curriculum. When we first started our homeschool journey seven or eight years ago, I went with a traditional textbook spiral approach and we used Horizon Math. Now, I really loved Horizon Math, I still do, um, you have two textbooks like this per grade level. I never felt like I needed the teacher book. I never felt like I needed the manipulatives, which made this a fairly inexpensive curriculum. The pages were fairly colorful, and each lesson usually was just the front and back side of a page. It worked very well for us. Horizon tends to be a little rigorous, which worked great for my kids who were good at math but it also was a lot of writing, which became frustrating for my kids who struggle with writing. Overall, I really liked the curriculum until my oldest hit about third grade. In third grade, it becomes more parent intensive. It needed more parent instruction. And my oldest really wants to be autonomous when it comes to math. He wants to learn it on his own. He doesn't want to talk about it. He just wants to get it done. So at that point, I found myself reevaluating and looking at other curriculums. If you're looking for a textbook heavy, traditional or spiral approach, I do recommend Horizon. Similar programs would be Abeka, Bob Jones, and teaching textbooks, even though that is available online. When we switched from Horizon, I found myself using Khan Academy. Now Khan Academy is an online free math program. It's a mastery approach and it pretty much covers everything you need to know for that year. It's video based, it's interactive, it's really great. It worked very well with my son, my oldest son. What I did find it lacked a little bit is repetition, extra practice. It covered the basics, but it needed a little bit of reinforcement. So I did buy these Spectrum workbooks. These are uh, the Spectrum math workbooks. You can get these on Amazon. They're $10. They have one for each grade level. It basically just covers everything you need to know in the year as well really excellent review. I'm gonna post the link to these in the description, um, an affiliate link for the Spectrum Math workbooks. My oldest son has used Khan Academy off and on from third grade on. It really is excellent. He likes it a lot, but I did feel like I wanted just a little bit more for him than just covering the basics. That led me to Beast Academy. Now, Beast Academy is a totally different out of the box curriculum that is sort of geared towards gifted math students or students who just need an out of the box approach. For the textbook version of Beast Academy, you have graphic novels that teach the concepts. It's very much mental math and learning to think mathematically. It really doesn't fit within a common core approach to math or a traditional approach to math. It kind of combines them all and has its own thing going that I have loved. It has blown my mind. I thought I understood math. Turns out I didn't understand math. I understand it a lot better now since going through Beast Academy. Each year has four of these guidebooks. These are the graphic 
novel style books and then four workbooks or you can do it online. We started with the physical books and we shifted gear online. And the reason why I have liked the online approach is this. One, for my kids with writing disabilities, it eliminated the writing and helped them focus on the math, which was a major plus for me. For my oldest son, I didn't have to grade his work and tell him he was doing things wrong. A computer could do that, which just eliminated a lot of arguing and tension in our relationship. So I was very thankful for that. Three, it makes it a lot easier to review because you can just go back and do the sections over again. It's a little harder to do that in a workbook because you'd have to go erase all the answers. There's also a lot of games. They've added a point system and you can update your avatar. There's also a whole section of labs and puzzles that my kids spend a lot of time doing. In fact, they will say, can I hurry up and finish with our math problems so I can go do the math labs, the puzzles, and they wanna spend hours doing those. I feel like it's really helped them develop mathematical thinking. Now, it is rigorous. It tends to be a year or two ahead. Even if you're in fifth grade, I kind of would start back at level two from the beginning because it's such a different way of thinking about math. My oldest son is in sixth grade this year. He started the level five Beast Academy books and he hit a wall. It was really challenging for him and he was unable to progress. So we actually are going back and reviewing level four before moving on. And he's still doing the Khan Academy work online as well, just to make sure that we're covering all those basic concepts that he needs covered. One of the most out of the box math curriculums that we've ever used is something called Life of Fred. Now we didn't use it for very long as an actual math curriculum. We used it as a supplement. It was available at our local library and my kids loved it. Basically you have a book for each level and they go in alphabetical order. Apples is the very first one. And you just read this really silly book about a guy named Fred as he solves real life math problems. They go all the way through high school and they start really simple, but it's pretty exciting for the kids to interact with math in this way and to learn about Fred. It's a lot of fun and it is a really good curriculum. So if you need something that is just totally the opposite of a textbook style math program, I really encourage you to look at Life of Fred. I think the books are about $15 a piece. I will post links in the comments. You can check those out, but also check your local library because they were all available at our local library. You just had to request them and have them sent to our branch. A popular math curriculum that we have never tried personally, but many of my friends have tried, is Matthew C. Now Matthew C is a manipulatives heavy curriculum that is a mastery approach and it's kind of mastery on crack. You actually spend an entire year covering the same subject matter. So it is a totally different scope and sequence than what you would get in public school or in a more traditional spiral style approach. But it is really great for teaching mathematically and I know a lot of friends really like it and have used it for years. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. If you are looking for something that is a little bit more out of the box, maybe your child isn't gifted, but you still need something different. Something like Beast Academy may not be a good fit. Matthew C might be the way to go. Teaching textbooks is also a really popular program. It is online based now, but you can buy the older editions on textbook with a CD-ROM. It's all available online. You do it online, but it is a traditional approach. It also tends to track about a year behind. So that could be a good or a bad thing, depending on what your needs are. Most of my friends that use teaching textbooks bump their kids up a grade. It really covers like the bare minimum that you need covered. Make sure you cover all of your bases. I have never considered it for us because I did want something more rigorous for my kids. I suspect at least a couple of my boys will end up in the science or math fields. That's kind of where their interest lies. And I've really wanted to make sure that they were thinking well mathematically and ready for that type of a career. So I have really been attracted to more of those rigorous programs. But teaching textbook is a very popular one. 
The other great thing is that they offer a large family package now, so you can get something that is affordable for your large family. If you are like us and you're getting homeschool curriculum for a lot of kids, it can be a major plus for you. The last program I want to talk about today is Singapore Math. It is not one that we have tried. However, I am considering using it for my daughter when she reaches kindergarten. Singapore Math uses the style of math that they use in foreign countries, namely Singapore. So they try to use that style of math. Common Core was actually loosely based on those ideas. I would say that they didn't implement it as well, but Singapore is a really solid program, tends to follow a different scope and sequence, is a bit rigorous. It is a very popular one and a very successful one. If you are thinking about switching to something like Singapore, please make sure that you take an online assessment. You wanna make sure that you're placing your kid where they need to be, as it's not gonna follow the same scope and sequence that a more traditional approach would take. There are so many more programs that I have not talked about. CTC Math, Prodigy Math being two, Time for Learning Math. These are just a few that are really popular that I just don't have a lot of experience with, so I don't feel like I can talk about. However, again, I recommended this in the last video. Please check out kathyduffyreviews.com. She covers pretty much every math curriculum, and you can see if it's spiral or mastery, traditional, common core, Singapore or something else that is totally out of the box. One more place I recommend that you check out if you are looking for the right math curriculum is Sunlight's website. Sunlight is the program that we use for history, Bible, and reading, but you can also buy math curriculums on their website. And on their website, they have an excellent comparison chart that I found that just compares a lot of the curriculums that I've talked about compares a lot of the popular curriculums, shows you if it's Common Core or not, shows you if it's parent intensive or not, if it's available online or textbook only. It's a really useful chart and they also have links to assessments for many of those popular programs. So it's kind of a nice one stop to find information on a lot of curriculums all at one time. I'm gonna leave you with one more piece of advice and this is just my personal experience take it or leave it. When it comes to math, when you look at statistics on how homeschoolers perform compared to public school students, homeschoolers actually tend to track a little bit behind in math. I think this is due to several reasons. One, parents hold their kids back a little bit in math to make sure that they are mastering content. This is not a problem. It is better to master content than move on, but that does mean that they test slightly behind when they're comparing testing. Two, many homeschoolers use a more traditional approach, which when you're using standardized tests that are using a more common core approach, they are going to look a little bit behind because common core moves more rigorously than traditional programs do. Or maybe parents just feel a little bit more insecure about teaching math and it might lead to some holes. I'm not sure. Either way, my advice is to be careful about changing math curriculums too frequently. It's easy to get in, into a math curriculum and feel like it's not working well and want to shift gears, but math curriculums vary so greatly in their scope and sequence, whether they're ahead or behind. It's easy to change curriculums and end up missing essential information and then have kids fall behind and be frustrated because they're missing important info. My advice is to find a curriculum that you think will work well and stick with it for at least a year. Give it that year, complete the whole program, and then shift gears. And if you feel like you need to shift gears to a different program, make sure you do the assessments. It's better to go back a year to make sure you're covering everything than to frustrate your kid by moving them ahead too quickly. I think that one of the reasons why homeschoolers tend to be a little bit behind in math is that we change curriculums too frequently and that the curriculums vary so greatly. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please make sure to comment below. I would love to help you find the math curriculum that works for you and for your kids. Happy homeschooling.